Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Scott Melbourne. I am the director of the Schneider Museum of Art, part of the Oregon Center for the Arts at Southern Oregon University. And today we are visiting Isabella Thorndike Church, who is a young creative that grew up in the Ashland area. I'm going to turn the camera on Isabella. Hi, Isabella. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about your installation today, but before we do so, how are you doing in these pandemic times? Um, I have to say that I'm doing pretty well, actually. Just trying not to have any expectations and being surprised by um, the results. I feel really privileged to have a pretty um, a life that can expand and contract fairly easily. So while my business life has changed a lot during these times, I've had a lot of other opportunities that have come up and creative opportunities that have um, been actually really fulfilling and maybe transitioning uh, when we come out of this, what mm. my professional and personal life looks like. That's great. Well, um, thank you for participating in our exhibition titled Celebrating Wild Beauty, which puts a spotlight in the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, Monument located in both Southern Oregon and Northern California. The exhibition is online. It's a virtual exhibition due to COVID-19. And what we're going to do right now is that we're going to take you outside. And just for you guys uh, tuning in, with traffic passing by, we will do our best to talk loud. But we're going to take a little glimpse of... Her Isabella's installation outside, and then we'll come back inside for some more questions. So let's follow Isabella outside. Hey, come along. So as you can see, we're kind of working from the outside in here. This first piece is uh, mixed media. It really started actually with this coil of copper that you can see coming down. I like to start every piece with some movement. Most of my work is all about movement and texture and one ingredient kind of leads to the other. So I never really know where it's going, but I just see what is gonna grab my attention from the beginning and then I follow that train throughout the installation. So starting with the copper wire, incorporated some seaweed and what I like to call um, roadside grasses, and then kind of moved through the piece and then popped out the other side out here and popped out of the building. One of the uh, inspirations for the title and for the pieces in general, recapture to me means that this pandemic actually has really made us realize what a part of the natural world we are, which for some people has been a little bit less obvious than others. And so I think as these human systems have been slightly or very much so breaking down and natural systems have been taking over, in this case, a virus, uh, it stands in for a lot of natural what happens when we humans kind of back out of the picture so for example in a literal sense this used to be a commercial space and is now an art piece created with natural materials so it's a little bit kind of pointing to when nature takes over what can happen and in a lot of senses when we humans collaborate with nature in a helpful manner it can be more beautiful than not. So moving through into the other window, this piece started with the milkweed, which is one of my favorite materials. I'm often, when I'm looking for materials to work with, look for tones and this kind of golden tone inside the milkweed and the contrast with its grayed out stems really inspired me. So it started in this corner and again, it's a really a moving piece. So I never know quite what's happening, uh, but drawing from the outside in and trying to really minimize the tones that I use so that I can really look at how the shapes went together.
So Isabella, your, your installation was originally planned to go in the Schneider Museum of Art's Tree Haven Gallery, but due to COVID-19 and the cancellation or postponing of the, or moving the exhibition online to a virtual exhibition, that wasn't able to happen. How did this storefront come to be? Well, I think at that time, I when I heard that the exhibition was moving online, I thought to myself, well, gosh, online is really a place that I don't uh, feel like my work can, can come about too well. And it's a very physical experience. So walking through town one night, I was looking at some empty storefronts and kind of hoping to both enliven the town and be able to do my work. And so thanks to Scott, who actually has had a similar idea in the past, uh, immediately jumped on board and helped me contact the owner of this building and the broker. And they were kindly and generously willing to give us full access to the space. And it's also, as you can see, a really large space. So we have three separate windows. We'll get down to the third one. But I couldn't have asked for a better space. And I think the other inspiration for it was that museums are places that not everyone goes, but streets are places where everyone passes by. So I was hoping that having a little bit of art uh, would be kind of an exciting and maybe a bright piece in this rather dark time for a lot of people. Thank you. Let's move down to the third window for a look. So the address is 25 East Main Street in Ashland, Oregon. Look at this incredible outdoor outside of the window piece hanging here. Where is this piece from? The branch is actually from the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument. Uh, a friend of mine lives uh, inside the monument and collected it for me. I kind of have a lot of people who keep an eye out for interesting branches or grasses or materials for me and so she dropped it off at my house and I kind of immediately knew that it needed a home. Okay why don't we move inside let's see if we can get inside of okay. the installation. Talk a little bit about this space and how you utilized it to create these window installations. So it's a little bit hard to tell from your perspective probably, but the materials I use take up a lot of space. And so that was actually something that really had to shift when I moved from the Treehaven Gallery into this space, was thinking about most often my installations are experienced from within a building so you're experiencing it as your surroundings and so to transition to what will this look like for people looking from the outside and these while these window boxes look massive to a passerby when I brought in all my material I was like oh <laughs> what am I gonna do with all of this and so I spread it out all over this huge floor uh, you can see what I have left over there mm -hmm. and essentially my creative process starts with like I said earlier I look at the materials that I've collected over time uh, because either I like their tone or their shape or the movement that they have and I walk through them and then at that particular moment if one of them grabs my eye I pick it up and I start seeing what it wants to do. And oftentimes the material tells me what it wants to do more than I do it. So whether it's a branch that has, for example, a particular curve like this, you know, I, there's nothing that I can do to create this curve, but it inspires the beginning of, of a movement. So I pick a piece and I get to work. So, the other part was kind of figuring out how to make the pieces stand out. So Scott and I did some uh, creative thinking about that and hung some canvas, as you can see on the back of this piece. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out windows have a lot of reflection, so that took some creativity as well as figuring out how can we make this so that people can see it from the outside and they're not just looking at themselves or at the cars passing behind them. Wonderful. And then, <clears throat> so this one's covered up with the canvas for the backdrop. This one looks like we can probably prop ourselves up inside and get a get an inside look. We're gonna jungle in here. Whoa. <laughs> so anybody who is uh, just joining us, we're speaking with Isabella Thorndike Church, who has created a window installation downtown Ashland, Oregon, at 25 East Main Street. She is part of our online virtual exhibition titled Celebrating Wild Beauty, which celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, which is in Southern Oregon and Northern California. Little view of downtown Ashland. Uh, Isabella, how long have you been working this way? And what was the inspiration to work with these materials? I think I probably started working with collected materials at the beginning of my design career, which is a little bit, has kind of a fuzzy line. I grew up in the flower world. My mom has been a commercial cut organic flower grower since I was three years old and she was one of the pioneers of organic farming so i grew up in and around flowers she strictly has been a grower and not a designer so i would say whatever design instincts kind of came intuitively um and not through any kind of training but i think that i've always kind of looked around and experienced my surroundings as a, a participant as opposed to a outside viewer. So it's hard for me to walk down the street or take a walk in the woods and not see what's surrounding me as potential materials. Mm -hmm. um, installation wise, I started through weddings. So when I moved back to the Valley in 2015, I started a little bit my own business at that time in that fall, but I really launched uh, Jack Lily seasonal floral design in 2016. And that's when I really started working with uh, floral foam free design techniques and uh, for arbors and installation pieces. And then that kind of led into doing installations for restaurants like Hither here in town and for Oberon's and Flavor in Medford. And it all kind of happened for lack of a better term organically. Um, and one thing led to another and um, so this piece in particular, uh, as a celebration of this place that we live in, came really naturally to me because I find in my work that I try and celebrate our surroundings every day, which is why I intentionally choose to use only local materials in my work. So it was pretty easy for me to celebrate our region because that's what I'm most drawn to already as a designer. And since you've completed this installation here in the storefront, you've come back and fiddled with it, played with it, added to it. Um, why have you come back to it? What's, what's going on with that? Um, the most uh, significant time that I came back was actually to add a bunch of fresh flowers to it, which you don't see right now because they are temporary, but they were lining this floor uh, a couple weeks ago for the Ashland Town celebration of Ashland and Bloom, part of the summer series to bring people out in a safe way. So I incorporated live materials for that experience. Uh, the, the installation, the base that you see here happened over the course of two to three weeks. And it happened over time, one, honestly, because I am farming and designing at the same time. So uh, time-wise, when I had availability, and two, because whenever I create a piece and I come back to it, I often am immediately confronted with, oh, I actually don't like that, or that doesn't quite look finished. And you never really know when something's going to be finished until you put that last piece and you feel, ah, okay, we're done now. <laughs> You grew up in beautiful Southern Oregon, which is known for great outdoor spaces. What kind of relationship do you have with outdoor spaces? 
I am super fortunate to come from a family that really allowed me to experience the full breadth of our beautiful region. So I grew up uh, going to Mount Ashland like it was my second home in the summer and in the winter, going on the river, hiking, biking. So my parents really, uh, from a very early age, threw me in a backpack and allowed me to experience this place that we live. So I also live right up at the base of Lithia Park, and that has led to a lot of adventure and exploration because the easiest thing to do is walk out my door and walk into the woods, so I don't need to go far to explore. And what are your plans and hopes for the future for this kind of work? I, gosh, uh, first have to say that I'm not a huge planner. <laughs> Um, I really find that the best opportunities um, come when I am doing the work that I really love. And so being able to do things like this have led other people to see my work and then contact me. Um, I'm not, I think, probably to a fault a great promoter. Um, and so I really like to I would like to do more of this work, but I also am, I guess, an artist in this way. I don't feel great forcing myself on on people, especially since it is pretty unique and odd and not everyone's cup of tea. And I think, as especially as a, a florist, as a wedding designer, I the best jobs come about when we have a relationship that people choose me because of my aesthetic and I choose them because my aesthetic resonates with them, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, for both personal and professional, what, what is next for you? For me, I'm kind of in the summer frenzy right now. So I work with my mom on our flower farm. So the summer is a little bit, you just kind of nose to the ground and um, so my week looks like picking hundreds of thousands of stems of flowers and spreading them out into our community, which has a real appreciation for local and organic flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks in large part to a lot of work that my mom has done over the last three decades. So that takes up some of my time. Um, the other has really actually been getting out to appreciate our home in this season, which due to weddings, I haven't really done since I've lived here. So. Um, I've been getting out hiking and rafting and exploring in that way um, during the summer, which has been really exciting. I have a couple installations coming up, um, one at a new restaurant in Phoenix, which is going to be called Clyde's Corner, and I'm going to be doing an installation there next week. You can look for their opening in early August, so that'll be exciting. And um, I continue to design with fresh flowers now for personal instead of um event basis i every week sell fresh flowers at hither market down that away in town and then also directly via my studio and that has actually been a real silver lining to this experience that as opposed to working with materials that i've talked about with someone for the last nine months to a year i get to look at everything we've harvested and pick what's most exciting to me at that moment and design whatever I want. And that has actually been super special and rewarding. Mm -hmm. And just for reference, your mother's organic flower farm is Lemire Gardens. Yep. Um, if you guys want to check that out online. Uh, Isabel, I'm going to just take a quick look at some of the installation in here before we wrap it up and say goodbye. I'd like to thank you so much for participating in our online and virtual exhibition and being able to find an alternative venue to the gallery space in the museum uh, so that your installation can be created and documented and uh, shared with audiences and from the other side of that window shared from uh, with safe distancing. Um, Isabel, thank you again so much for being part of our exhibition and for being a wonderful, um, creative individual living and working in Southern Oregon. Thanks very much. <laughs>